So after a really intense qualifying session, this is how the grid lined up. It was Watson that managed to get pole position um, with the last lap of qualifying on the final lap before the chequered flag. Watson managed to put in a 134.5, which just beat Johansson's 134.6. These two, well, two rivals for the Silver Championship really going at it, and only 0.1 difference between the two of them in qualifying. And it was Watson with the final lap of qualifying that managed to get pole position. Behind them in P3 was Pasho, who did a 134.7. The front three here all going for the Silver Championship, all knowing that little bonus point of getting pole position could make the difference. And only a tenth behind uh, P2 was Pacho, but behind him, Herkeber in P4. He did a 134.8, so although he is not going for the Silver Championship, the Silver Drivers really putting in on a, uh, a show in qualifying. And then behind them was the two pros of Babin and Matthews. Babin getting ahead of Matthews. Now Matthews has already sealed the overall championship, but bragging rights is what Babin would have wanted in this race, and he managed to get P5 just ahead of his rival Matthews in P6, second out of the pro drivers. Behind them in P7 was Rob's. Really good qualifying from him. I think just a bit slower than the other Silvers, who I think were just on a mission with the Silver Championship at stake, but a pretty good lap from him puts him in P7. My item in P8 was Privor. Am drivers not having to race uh, in this race since they raced here as their first race of the season. And this one would have had to be rescheduled for the pro and silver drivers. So Privor down as an invitational not to score any points, but just to add cars to the grid. As you can see, quite a small grid here. Uh, with a lot of the drivers missing, uh, Bosman rounded off the rest of the grid in P9. There was supposed to be Nordell in P10, but a technical glitch meant that he uh, did not race, which was a very shame, because already a small grid, it would have been nice to have that extra car. So yeah, very short grid in today's race. Um, a few races clashed with this one, and obviously with the AM not racing and the Pro Championship already being sealed, I think it was mainly silver drivers that turned up for this race but small grid but not to say it wasn't a good race and here have a watch here Watson on the outside so obviously he's on pole position but coming around the outside um, I think he underestimated the speed he was carrying and look he's actually behind Johansson here and you know he's supposed to be starting on pole position but he hasn't got his car alongside him. he doesn't want to exceed uh, the speed to get it because if he does he'll get a drive through so already as the lights go out, Johansson was ahead of Watson, so not a great race start for Watson. There you see as the lights go green, Johansson already in the lead. Watson gets a good start, though the Bentley's good off the line. However, because he didn't start on pole position, he had to settle behind. He tries to make a move around the outside of Johansson here, but gets squeezed nicely out there. Just can't get the grip on the inside here. Johansson on the outside here, comes across to cover the inside. Watson has to break here, Pashov now going around the outside of the Bentley. Johansson pulls away. He'll be happy with remaining in P1. And Pashov here squeezing Watson out onto the curbs. Herkov also onto the curbs. There, big bunny hops from the Aston Martin behind there. And Pashov squeezing Watson out allows Babin to take Watson as well. But the Bentley has the straight line speed. Watson breaks nine early. Babin down the inside of Pashov. And that allows Watson to follow Babin through and maybe regain the position for Pashov. Pashov comes across and the two of them touch. And here, as you watch, going to the braking zone once again, Pashov touches the back of the Bentley. And Watson not too happy about that. Not a great race start from Watson. Loses pole position, loses two positions, well, three at one point. Manages to regain one of them. And makes contact with silver championship rival Pashov. But here he is in the slipstream of the Porsche. The Bentley has the straight line speed. Can he go down the inside here? He leaves Babin plenty of space. He's very cautious, doesn't want to spin out or crash and actually loses momentum coming out of the corner, which means he has to settle behind the Porsche of Babin. So Watson, not a great race start from him. A bit too cautious because he knows that he needs to score any sort of points for him to uh, give himself a really good chance going into the final race. Uh, but yeah, a bit too cautious, loses two positions, manages to hold on to P3, but he'll be looking to try and move on the order here. Now the rest of the pack you see after Matthews here, there's no one in sight. Matthews here right on the back of Herkeber and here is Bosman, Prevot and Robs. So uh, we'll have to have a look at the race start and see why these guys are so far off the pack.
So we'll look at the replay on board Bosman's Ferrari here. If you watch the race start, see Pico there already. Very eager for the lights to go green, and he does exactly that. Gets an absolutely brilliant start here. But Rob's having the inside here. He manages to hold off the Frenchman. Bosman just settling here. Watching from behind. Hoping to pick off a few. Oh, and here, this is where Robs goes deep. Prevot goes down the inside here. Robs tries to hang around the outside, loses the position to Prevot. Prevot goes out to take the entry, and Robs just sticks his nose in, and the two of them come together. Unfortunately for Bosman, he had to break to not collide with those two. And yeah, unfortunately for those two, that's the reason why this little group of cars has fallen so far back from the lead pack. On to lap five, and Pasha right on the back of Watson still. The front two, Johansson and Babin pulling away. So Johansson will be glad that he remains in P1 silver class. Watson though in P2, Johansson would have wanted Pashov to get past the Bentley driver. That gives himself and Pashov a better chance of winning the championship. But Watson's not gonna give up that easy. And here goes Pashov right on the back of Bentley. This section here is where the Bentley struggled through the first sector. But as they come through this fast section, this is where the Bentley is stronger around the fast corners as they come around the little kink of turn seven into turn eight here. And just watch Pasho, he breaks way too late, almost runs into the back of the Bentley, has to go wide to avoid the back of the Bentley. That allows Herkema to go down the inside of the Porsche driver. And the Norwegian moves up into P4 and into P3 in silver class. And Pasho, well, he'll be absolutely gutted with that because he knows there's a silver championship at stake and losing the position to Herkimer there has really hurt his chances of winning this championship and now he's under threat from Matthews although that doesn't matter too much he would not like to have another car in between him and his championship rivals up ahead so Pashov will be eager to try and make up those lost positions To lap seven, so two laps later, you see the gap. Watson has pulled a bit here. Watson faster than Herka, but pulling away. And this is where Pasha losing a bit of patience here because uh, he knows he's faster than Herka, but and he wants to compete with championship rivals Watson and Johansson, who's right up, up the field. And uh, so he's pushing here with Matthews all over the back of him. Matthews stuck behind these silver drivers here. He will be wanting to get past these guys as fast as possible. And uh, as they come through here, just look how close that goes back three are. Watson starting to pull away slightly uh, from Herkema. Herkema trying to hold off Pasho, who's trying to hold off Matthews. Matthews, look how close he is to the back of that Porsche. He'll be wanting to get past these and maybe throw an attack at Babin up ahead, as those two are the two pro drivers in this race. But watch as we come onto this back straight with the kinks. And there's Johansson, there's Babin, quite a few seconds ahead. Watson comes through, then you have Herkova, Pashov, Matthews, all in a little gaggle together. And just watch as we go into this heavy braking zone here. Herkova, plenty of room to Pashov. Pashov just misses his braking zone once again, touches the back of the Aston Martin and spins him around and Matthews collected slightly in that one as well, and that, that is just Rosen Pashov's uh, race going from bad to worse there. He had lost a few positions, a few collisions with his championship rival, and now collects another silver championship driver and uh, puts a lot of damage on the front of his car, and both of them here entering the pits to repair the damage and try and recover something from this race. Luckily for them, a short grid means they won't fall too far back. Uh, but yeah, not the way these guys would have wanted to go, and especially not the way Pashov would have wanted his race to go. 
On to lap 11, we saw the change for the lead of the race. Now we have Babin closing in on Johansson. Now, although Johansson, Watson, uh, Pashov were putting in amazing qualifying laps uh, because that extra point would have been the world to them uh, for this silver championship. When it came to race pace, well, this is why we see these drivers are pro drivers and the other drivers are silver drivers. Babin all over the back of Johansson. Now, Johansson, knowing he doesn't want to put up too much of the fight because... Uh, he doesn't care about the overall win. Normally he probably would have, but he doesn't want to lose time because you can see there, has the right-hand side turn signal on saying, I'm going to stay out your way, go up my inside, Babin. And Babin does that, but not quite well enough. Doesn't get the exit. You can see the right-hand side turn signal on there of Johansson. Johansson being, get past me. I don't want to lose time battling you because I just need the silver championship win. I don't need an overall win. There is left-hand side one is saying I'm going to go wide. That allows Barman down the inside. And that's exactly what happens. In the background, you can see Pashov out the pits, but a lap down. Watson now fending off Matthews. Um, again, Watson probably doesn't need to fe defend from Matthews uh, much because he just needs the silver position, not the overall position. But we see the change of lead. Babin into P1. Not the first time we've seen this this season. A really good drive from him. Uh, not the best qualifying, but he's really made his way up the order and somehow has a really good race pace and a really good race setup on that Porsche. And uh, he'll be looking to try and pull away as Johansson settles for second. But he'll be happy with first in silver class. Here is Watson now. He'll be fending off from Matthews. And Matthews goes massively wide across the grass there. He's pushing because he wants to catch Babin up ahead. But is this something to see? Johansson, Pashov and Watson will all most likely be in the pro class next season with their really good efforts and racing this season. So maybe this is something we'll see next season. And, uh, well, nothing's going to test Watson better than defending from the overall champion. Uh, couldn't get anyone better behind you to try and defend from. As Watson holds on to P3 for now. So on to lap 19 and Watson well still fending off from Matthews. Quite a few battles going on between these two. But for now, Watson keeping him behind. Now Watson doesn't have to keep him behind. He can let him through because, like I said, what matters most to him is the silver class position. But Watson's a racer at heart and a racer at heart will always race as Matthews goes down the inside there. Watson trying to hang it around the outside. The Bentley getting a bit squirmy with that much power under the rear wheel. But now he has the inside for the next corner. Who's going to break the latest? Well, they both break around the same time, but Watson has the inside line. Matthews is going to try and cut it back, but the Bentley is so long he gets impeded by it. And onto the straight they go. There's Johansson, there's Pashov, who is a lap time trying to unlap himself. And here comes Watson and Matthews. Bumper to bump around the fast right-hander here. And is Matthews going to try and make a move on the Bentley driver here as they come down? Not quite. Watson, for now, holds on to P3 overall. And uh, probably losing a bit of time defending from Matthews. But, like I said, he's a racer at heart. And he will be really enjoying this battle uh, with Matthews. down the start finish straight Bentley just has a straight line speed don't think Matthews unless he gets a much better exit this is where the Bentley struggles though through sector one you'll just see how close the Aston Martin gets to the back of the Bentley I don't think he can get much closer through these slow corners it's where the Bentley really struggled it's such a long car it's hard to get rotated but for now he's gonna hold Matthews off and remain in P3 too much longer here there once again Pashov really close to Johansson you just see those two going through Pashov really putting in good laps here as he's trying to salvage something from this race and just watch Watson and Matthews here as Watson uh, well Matthews breaks much later than Watson and I think Watson not wanting to uh, be collected here that just stays out of Matthews ways lets him down the inside he's saying no nope, I'd rather we don't make contact because uh, this position as much as I like fighting for it is not worth to me 
losing uh, a silver class position. So, bottom drops off the overall podium, but he won't be too fussed. He'll be trying to follow Matthews here, maybe trying to find uh, some good lines and how he can improve the pace. Uh, because for him, he holds on to P2 in silver class, and that'll be the most important thing for him at the moment as he looks to uh, just follow Matthews and maybe try and gain some time on Johansson up the road. Because uh, Johansson does have a five second penalty to serve uh, at his pit stops due to uh, incident at the previous race. So Watson will be wanting to try and capitalize on that as he runs slightly wide coming out of turn six there. So whilst Watson and Matthews were battling out and Matthews got past, this is what was happening with Johansson. As Pashov right on his tail, he decides, okay, this is the time to go into the pit stop, into the pits he goes. As he comes down, he's going to break nice and late, heavy on the brakes. Perfect pit entry. So Johansson into the pit. There you see Matthews just ahead of Watson as they come down the straight. So that's what, when uh, he went into the pit. Now he does, like I said, have a five second penalty to serve. So uh, we will see where he will be when Watson serves his pit stop. Now Watson was around 6.7 seconds back, so that means he would still be behind once um, he pits. But lap 24, well, Ross and Pasha, we said his race got from bad to worse and, well, I don't think it could get any worse, but it did. Lap 24 here. Watch him come out here, which is turn 15. And watch all four wheels go over the curb. And he was already on three track limit warnings. And as he comes around the final corner here, he gets the message that he gets a drive-through penalty for exceeding track limits. And yeah, his race just got even worse. Going for the silver championship, colliding with another silver rival, dropping down the order, and now having to serve a drive through for exceeding track limits. And uh, yeah, he'll be devastated with that. Good news for Watson, but yeah, Pashov, not a great race for him at Misano and quite a forgettable one. And unfortunately for him, not the moment to have a bad race. And the news couldn't get even better for Watson. Watch your hands in here, all four wheels over the curb. That's exceeding track limits. And just like fellow silver championship rival Pasha, he was already on three warnings and that was his fourth and a drive through for exceeding track limits. Johansson peels into the pit straight away to serve it. But yeah, I think Watson's day couldn't get any better. He had a terrible start to the race. Um, and he was settling for P2 in, uh, in, in class, but his two main rivals for the Silver Championship get a drive-through penalty for exceeding track limits. And I think Watson right now must be smiling to himself, thinking, wow, I am really lucky. And uh, he will just be looking to try and uh, keep the car on track and just make it to the end and win the, the Silver class and uh, hopefully seal the Silver championship at race nine in today's race at Bassano. So there you see, just up ahead, you saw Herkimer passes Johansson now that Johansson uh, serves his pit stops. That means Watson, P1 in class, still needs to serve his pit stop though. Herkimer, P2, Johansson, P3, and more importantly, Pashov, P4. And with Pashov being off the podium and Watson winning, that means Watson would be crowned silver champion, silver class champion, uh, because Johansson had to finish ahead of Watson, and Pashov had to finish on the podium if Watson wins the silver class. So as it stands, Watson will be crowned silver class champion. Uh, will it stay this way? Well, let's find out, because Watson for now settling, which will be P3 back in the overall podiums with Johansson having to serve that drive through penalty. And, uh, I don't know if he would have known at this point that he would be champion as it stands, but he is only on one track limit warning, so don't think he'll be getting any drive through anytime soon. Especially not considering that he won't be pushing now that he is in first in class. But lap 29, well, this is where it all changed. Johansson 
we have to mention has been racing the last few rounds with a knee injury that he sustained so uh, I mean really good of him to put in the, the drives he did with a knee injury but with the silver championship out the window for him with that drive through he decides to retire the car not make his knee any worse uh, which completely makes sense you know you don't want to make it any worse when there's nothing at stake for him anymore so he comes into the pits and retires the car but even though the championship was over for him that actually does change something in the championship because him retiring promotes Pashov up into P3 in class on the podium so that no longer means that Watson will be crowned silver class champion so Pashov being in P3 means that Watson will be 27 points ahead which means that Pashov will have to score a full 27 points which means winning silver class fastest lap and pole position overall at the next race at Hungaroring for him to win and Watson not to score a single point so you know it's going to be very hard for the Bulgarian but not impossible and mathematically it means that Watson is not crowned lap 34 is when Watson decided to peel into the pits now unfortunately for him he was not far enough ahead of Herkova to have enough time to change tyres but he decided he was going to fix the damage on his car that he sustained in the first few laps and go for faster slap because with that bonus point of pole position he is 27 points ahead if he gets fast slap and gets that bonus point he would be 28 points ahead and would seal the silver championship so like I said unfortunately was not far enough ahead of Herkova to change tyres uh, without risking coming behind the Norwegian but fixes the damage, puts some fuel in, and off he goes. And he'll be looking to try and get the fastest lap of the race, which currently is held by Babin, a 134.757, which is just faster than Pashov's 134.792. So Babin, only a few hundredths faster than Pashov for his fastest lap. Watson will be really happy that Babin managed to put that lap in because that doesn't give Pashov the fastest lap. But that is a very good lap time for Watson to try and beat. So here he comes on his out lap. He'll be warming up his tyres and he has a few laps remaining here to try and put in the fastest lap of the race. Will he be able to do it? Well, only time will tell. So we move on to the final lap of the race and there you see Pashov a lap down, well almost a lap down. He's just ahead of Babin as Babin comes around the final corner and once again this season Babin wins the race and he'll be really pleased coming back after not racing at Imola to win this race overall. Matthews has to settle for P2, uh, still a good result for him and Watson on this final lap puts in an absolute flyer of a lap. Well, fortunately for him, it's only a 35-0, so three-tenths short of the fastest lap. So the championship is mathematically not over, but what a race we've had from these three and Johansson uh, before he had to retire the car. Uh, but these four, we'll be looking forward to uh, watching these next season in the pro class as we hear Babin doing some donuts on the... Uh, off-road here as Watson goes to join him hasn't sealed the silver championship but a silver class win once again I think he'll be pretty happy with that and all he has to score is one point at Hungary to win the championship and uh, he'll be looking to do that and like I said Watson's a racer so he'll be looking to finish the season off in style so let's have a look at the Final race results, so it was Babin that finished in P1 with the fastest lap in the end, 38 laps he managed to complete. Matthews finishes in P2, only 5.6 seconds behind in the end, he managed to close that gap up quite a bit, but being stuck behind the silver drivers and Watson for a while, um, he had a lot of ground to make up. Watson, P3, another overall podium for him, he's been really good this season and uh, is probably most likely why we'll see him is in the pro class next season. Herkaba in P4, really good result from him. 
Uh, he'll be really pleased with that. Pashov has to settle for P5 after his drive through. Bosman and Robs in sixth and seventh. They're both a lap down along with Prevost. And Johansson unfortunately retired the car. And Nordell in P10 did not start because uh, of, like we mentioned, that technical glitch. He was the 10th driver that unfortunately uh, didn't race. So, unfortunately, only nine drivers racing and only eight finishing. A very short grid at today's race. But still a good race. Some good battles between Matthews and Watson and Herkeber and Pashov. So, a race full of drama. And this was the final race results after 38 laps at Misano. For the silver race results, well, this is the most important one here. It was Watson that managed to win 34 seconds ahead of Herkeberg P2, a good silver podium for him. Pashov still gets a silver podium in P3. He'll be pleased with that after Johansson retires. Bosman in P4, Robs in P5. And like I mentioned, Johansson retiring the car. So Pashov still gets a podium, but has made life very difficult for him to win the silver championship after today's race. But nothing is impossible and we'll look forward to it at Hungara Ring. So the overall standings, Matthews obviously remains on top after winning the championship at the previous round on 153 points. Babin does close the gap slightly. He's now on 98, but more importantly for him, he moves ahead of Nordell, who's unable to race. Uh, he'll be looking to seal P2. Nordell in P3. Watson jumps all the way up to P4 with that overall podium. He is now three points ahead of Fantozzi, and he'll be really happy with that. Fantozzi, Fashard, Stoop, and Binches, none of them racing, move down one spot each. Pashov moves ahead of Johansson with Johansson retiring. He is ahead by just two points to round off the top ten. Wallace, Stosic, Martinovic, and Murray also did not race, so they remain in the same position on the same points. And a newcomer in the top 15 is Herkeber. That P4 overall moves him into the top 15, adds another silver class driver to the top 15. So I think we can see the best silver drivers here. Which one of these will be in pro class next season? Well, I think a few of them will be. But I think uh, Herkeber, a really good effort from him to be able to put himself in 15th there on 18 points. So, more importantly, the silver driver classifications. Watson on 131, 27 points ahead of Pashov on 104. These two will be going at it in Hungara Ring to try and seal the championship. Johansson is now tied on points with Robs and Herkeber in third place. They'll be battling it out for P3. I think Johansson, though, won't be racing due to his knee injury. Uh, he'll be focusing on next season in the pro class uh, because he did show the pace and he missed quite a few races this season. So I think if he didn't, he most likely could have won the silver class. So uh, for now, though, he shares P3 with Robs and Herkeber. Esteban in P6 on 57, Leiter in P7, Tan in P8, Runo in P9. Bosman, having raced today, moves ahead of Byrne on 45. He now sneaks into the top 10, three points ahead of the British driver. Byrne and Letzkeman both moved down one spot into 11th and 12th. Gandhi, Hoya, and McNamara did not race, so they remain on 27, 20, and 16 points, respectively. And the AM, well, obviously the AM, the last round was at the Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari at Imola and like we saw Yi sealed the championship there on 143 points ahead of Cooper's on 116, Prevost on 106 and Chin on 96. Only 10 points separating each of those three drivers so we look forward to seeing what the race can bring at Hungara Ring and what the overall podiums will be in each class because those are still yet to be sealed and that's something that will be interesting to keep an eye out for. Manufacturer classification, well Aston Martin on 222 looks likely that they will seal the manufacturer championship good racing from a lot of their drivers they do have the most drivers on the grid but very good from them ferrari is the second most uh driven car this season but they're only four points ahead of porsche porsche will be looking to jump them for that p2 overall that will be really interesting to keep an eye out for mclaren looks safe in p4 
quite a way off Porsche, but quite a way ahead of Mercedes. Mercedes and Bentley coming close together now. 84 for Mercedes and 66 for Bentley Motorsport. Only 18 points between the two of them. Uh, will Bentley be able to jump ahead of Mercedes in the final race of the season? That's something to keep an eye out for. And it could have been even closer if Byrne managed to not have that technical issue and finish uh, Imola on the podium. Lamborghini and Audi remain on 10 and 6 points to round out the manufacturer's classification.